I'm Stephen Clements from Q Breakfast. I'm Kate Conway, also from Q Breakfast. This afternoon, a top temperature of 8 degrees. Feels good. Hey, oh. Wake up laughing. Wake up, you. Stephen and Kate at breakfast. Seven forty nine now. On the way, we have loads of stuff to give away. This is disciples on my mind now on Q Breakfast. <laughs> You're silly, Billy. Hmm. We meet in the car park every morning at about five thirty. Um, before that, though, I stop in the shop to buy porridge and bananas and different supplies for Stephen. Not and then we just meet for me. For you. And then we meet in the car park and we walk around together. Um, it's about a five minute walk, but it's just right through the city centre and it's a wee bit grim really early in the morning. So Depending on our moods, we'll either talk to each other or we'll just walk in silence. Sometimes I do all the talking and he's just like... Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I pick up that that's what Moody said, I stop talking. <laughs> Sometimes the other way around. Sometimes. I'll be yeah. chatting and you'll be just like... No. Sometimes I don't get a word in. My cats. My cats. <sighs> I've always wanted to be a radio presenter. Since I was 15 or 16 I wanted to do it. But whenever I was young there was no internet. That's right, there used to be a time with no internet. <laughs> and um, So I lived in a housing estate in Cary Fergus. So radio land or television land or the media in Northern Ireland was a million miles away. How you would even get there was, was beyond me. So it took me 20 years plus to find it. Um, and the best thing about it is that it is as good as I thought it would be. And every day, th there's a, I hate cliches, but the cliche of if you're doing something you love, you never work a day in your life, it so holds true for me because I had some great jobs and some of them paid a lot of money as well, but I used to dread getting up in the morning. Now, it's not easy when your arm goes off at 4.30, but um, I never dread going to work. Um, and I haven't since I started doing this full time. I just love the fact that I get a pet to talk and listen to music and have fun with my friend and it's it's nice things you know it's it's you you make people laugh and I, I really I like that. I think it's important as well or maybe one of our USPs in the market is that both of us worked full lives up until we were in our 30s in our mid late 30s so we've mm -hmm. we're not um, straight out of media university into working on radio yeah. and have no life. We started working together about two, two and a half years Three ago. Three and a half years. Three and a half years. Almost Seems four. like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Longer sometimes and shorter other times. Yeah. But also we get a lot of really good opportunities. I mean we, we do a ski trip um, once a year with listeners which we love. We, we've we been to Peppa Pig World. We've been to, we get invited to host events like we turned on the Christmas lights this year and things that you wouldn't be invited to or be asked to do if you weren't in this job. And you meet really people that. that you only ever saw on TV and and they will say, hi Stephen, and I'm like, what? <laughs> he knows my name, she knows my name. Um, so it's very privileged and we never take it for granted mm -hmm. or forget that. When we were growing up, I think there was a bigger variety of music. Um, and if you even look back at the charts in those days, I think because people had to go out and, and buy it, you had to walk to Woolworths to buy it for it to get into the charts. There was a more of a mixture, so there was pop, and then there was goth, and then there was, you know, not heavy metal, but there was Guns and Roses, and there was a, a a big mixture of music. And nowadays, the charts are dominated by, you know, Katy Perry, Ed Little Sheeran, mix, yeah. and it's all very samey. Um, but the great thing about Q Radio is that we dip into the eighties and nineties, more than nineties now, I suppose, but. Um, and there's a lot more of that kind of nostalgia and it's when you hear a 90s song um, to a lot of the younger listeners it'll sound brand new to them they'll be like oh my goodness this is amazing um, but you don't hear as much I don't think um, songs that are clever and that stop you in your tracks like um, Shakespeare's sister for example had a song that came out stay with me in the I think it was probably the early 90s and when people heard it, they just stopped in the tracks. Mm -hmm. That doesn't happen with music so much, for me now anyway. Um, it's yeah. all a bit samey. Well, that's what I was going to say. I don't think I've heard a song recently that made me just go, <gasps> you know, and in our day, whenever you did hear a song like that, you had to then actually go and buy it or, you know, ask a friend if they had it. You couldn't just go on, like, 
lift your phone out and go on YouTube and hear it again. Mm. You, ha you know, it was maybe going to be another week or whatever before you heard it again. But I remember very clearly two songs here for the first time. And one was TLC, No Scrubs. And I was on the Dublin Road listening on a radio on my Walkman. And another one was Eminem. What was his first song? My name, my name is. is. And I was driving a Daihatsu Charade down the Malone Road. And it was playing as loud as the wee tiny radio would play. And I was just like... Because I'd never heard anything like it. And I, I just think that's lacking these days. There's nothing that really kind of just makes you go, oh, you know, it just seems really different. Although it's probably just our age. It could be. That could be in, an influencing factor as well, to be fair. 